All right, quick overview of the system. Now, I've got a few things still in flux because I've just finished installing a, a new DIY battery here. So, as you can see, I got a few things that still need to be wrapped up. But let me go over the, the from end to end what we have here. So it's a 6000 XP. It does connect to a 50 amp plug for uh, shore power and a 50 amp or a 250 volt plug for the charge burner. The charge burner is down here and I also have a plug for it to run off of a 20 amp or 15 amp 110 plug. So I can plug all that in and run that directly. That comes in through a relay switch here if I'm running it off of the charge verter so that it runs at a reduced rate or off of 110 voltage. And that relay is connected to the 6000 uh, 6, XP and it uses the dry contacts to flip it on and flip it off. And there is a uh, relay in here that turns, turns that power on coming in through the main charge verter control. So you can just leave that on all the time and it basically just kicks on whenever it gets the right voltage. As you can see, it just sits here and waits for the right time to kick on and kick off. I don't have the grid plugged in very often because I simply don't need it. Additionally, I have a couple of fans that blow across here when it gets when it gets starts to get warm in here. Keep in mind, I am in Florida, and so these fans are needed here in the, the summer months mostly. And, uh, it gets warm outside and it blows cools the air across the front of the 6000 and it evacuates it back into one of the bays over here. So, 6000, the power ports come out, run up into the bus bars, the positive and negative bus bar, the positive bus bar runs across the front fuse, and a littler bus bar here is split off to run over to two. Orion TR4812. I did not want to have a 12 volt system, so I used both of these um, to power all my 12 volt systems, and that way I don't have to have any 12 volt powering or charging or anything like that. From there, it runs into the main bus bar, which runs out to a couple of batteries there, and also down and around this battery here. Up here, I've got a pre charge, uh, pre -charge that can run. Basically, just push this button, light comes on, and the light dims, and you can put the batteries on. Um, I don't ever turn the system off, so it's very rare that I actually have uh, need it, but it's there when I do need it. Electronics, there are quite a bit of different electronics around. Um, this is the um, for the Victron systems, it plugs directly into the shunt. It also plugs into the Victron charger that's back there. As you can see, um, that runs from solar panels. This runs the solar panels off of the uh, solar shed that you see videos on the channel about. And the 6000 XP runs the solar panels, 10 370 uh, bifacial panels on top of the RV. Um, or on top of the RV, this runs the 10 250 uh, old panels I bought and uh, used runs from here on uh, for, for this. This is the one I've been playing with the setup trying to figure out what is the um, also, I have a little router here which runs through the Starlink uh, router network inside the this thing. Inside there is also a uh, solar assistant that is connected to the EG3 batteries. I have three EG3 100 amp batteries that these run to, and I have one 304, or excuse me, uh, yeah, 304 amp hour uh, DIY battery that is here. As you can see, using a JK BMS and uh, charging from there. Um, other than that, besides the solar panels on the roof and the, the, the EG3 batteries on the back of this wall, uh, this all sits in the front of my bay. Like I said, everything is kind of a mess right now because I've been rewiring it and looking to do all this DC wiring, redo all it, and then I got all the front in and everything is all, all completely uh, working. I no longer need 12 volt batteries and I've been All right, so in my fifth wheel of my solar system, and you saw my 6000 XP, so it has a 50 amp uh, breaker. And this is actually full uh, two poles, um, line one, line two, common, neutral um, uh, connection here. So this 
WF8930 or 8950 is a 50 amp breaker. It does come in a 30 amp or a 50 amp. Now the 30 amp is only a single single pole, um, but this is a, a, a 110 light connection. This is a 220 with the um, uh, split phase, so it does run both sides of the split phase. Now, um, what we what I um, want to do is uh, take you around also and show you some of the air conditioners and stuff. So I will take you out there and show you those. All right, so first here is the inside unit in the main cabin um, of the fifth wheel. You can still see here I have a little bit of work to uh, hide the uh, wood up at the top where I mounted it because I placed a, um, a nice piece of plywood behind it to mount it to. Just took off the cabinet drawers in the, right in the middle and ran the line for the drainage. Had to be lower than the normal unit and since this stuck down below the edge of the cabinet here a little bit, I just ran it back behind the closet here and hit it and then it goes out the wall over here in the side where you where no one can see it. And then the refrigerant lines of the unit just run right inside, go out, and I'll take you outside and show you that it has the electrical line comes through there and the refrigerant lines. And then of course it's sealed up over there on the edge, but I'll take you out and show you the outside unit also. But the inside unit here, as you can tell, it's running right now. It's pretty much silent. Um, I think it runs at about 28, 29 decibels. Unless I turn the fan on super, super duper high um, and force it to be that way, it rarely uh, can you hear it. Uh, it's completely different than the original roof unit. And as you can see here, I replaced the original, I took the original roof units out and I put a piece of uh, wood up here. There's bolts that go through, lag bolts that go through, four of them that go up into the top in the roof, and it's the same thing up there. And basically, I just seal that all up uh, and, and replace that. Then I use the breaker for this air conditioner to uh, re-ran the wire over to the outside unit. So I'll show you the outside unit also. Here's the outside unit, and it basically just gets the electrical from there. Refrigerant lines. I left the refrigerant lines just curled up at the back. I probably could have trimmed them, but I wanted to have, make sure it had plenty of room for it to bounce and wiggle around when it runs down the road. And of course, I just ran that up the side here, uh, up all the way in to the top where it meets the cabinet going out. And it's pretty easily uh, one of the best things I did. I did weld the bracket on here to make sure that this would not come loose. So you can see here that the bracket I did for this, let's see if I can get you a view of it here. So I welded two pieces of steel coming off of the bumper and this rack supports 800 pounds so it easily held an extra 50 pounds for this uh, ref uh, air, conditioner, air conditioning heat pump unit. This unit's mounted inside the bay, and it's basically just sitting on and screwed into the floor here. The ducts are sealed with a little bit of a, a flume here to force the air out diagonally. Um, the air conditioner, when it runs, it, uh, I usually try to, I can leave this propped open at night, but I did put some vents in that worked pretty well. You just close this and you can actually run this with it completely closed up running down the highway have no absolutely no problems i'll take you inside and show you the this unit runs to the bedroom and so i'll take you inside and show you the inside unit mounting also all right same as in here as in the other room i did have originally it mounted in the roof one of those window units that makes a ton of noise not only that it consumed about 25 kilowatts of power a day just running to, to might be able to keep it cool during the summer here in Florida it usually couldn't keep up um, but it was noisy and it was a power hog uh, these run if you turn them on full blast make it 70 degrees inside and it's boiling outside they run at about uh, probably run about five or six kilowatts a day each and so even the two of them together is half of what one was which is 25 percent the power usage very, very rarely do you need that much uh, to keep things cool. 
Um, it can be 100 degrees outside, and these can easily keep up. Um, I mounted this one by setting it on the actual shelf in the, the thing inside the closet, and I just took the door and took the mirror that my wife likes and attached that um, at the top over there so that she could have a place to uh, use the mirror. But the door is just left permanently propped open. This just sits across the top. And nothing different over here. I took the top unit out. Uh, we sealed it off at the top and the bottom. And I use that extra space for uh, solar panels, which I will show you that also. All right, so this is the roof. And you can see the 370 bifacial panels, 370 watt bifacial panels, all 10 of them mounted up here. And uh, there you go. There's the panels. Like and subscribe to the video. We'll see you next time. All right, so I went back one more time and got you a little bit more footage of the whole system from a distance. Make sure you like and subscribe to the videos. It really gets me to... Uh, uh, encourages me to, to create more and it helps the channel grow so that more people can share in this in this fun solar adventure that we're all having. Thanks a lot and I appreciate you all. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.